Alright, last video on this topic. In the previous two videos, we looked at a formula to calculate the momentum and the distance travelled. I had thought to get into speed from pedestrian throw formula, but Jackson wasn't able to nail Trooper Dunning-Kruger down on anything to do with a vertical velocity or even a horizontal velocity. The actual formula is much more complex than what I showed you. It might take into account friction in the case of sliding pedestrians, which is kind of how Trooper Paul described it, differences in the projection angle, differences if the collision happened on a gradient slope, whether or not the pedestrian was struck by the bonnet of the car, which will launch them higher into the air, then once you have all of those basic values in place, you can predict a typical pedestrian case where they're projected by a vehicle and on landing the contact force is high and impact results in a loss of horizontal speed. In theory this loss in speed is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the vertical speed of the pedestrian, which is why you need those values first. Following the initial contact with the ground, the pedestrian bounces or skids to a stop. It doesn't matter which manner the pedestrian behaves, as periods of low contact force and drag must also be compensated by periods of high contact force and high drag. These things are usually measured by the investigating police. For example, where they find hair, scalp or skin particles on the curb, if that's where they believe the pedestrian struck, or on the bitumen if they skidded to a stop. But we know that none of the investigators did or measured any of the sort. Another way to calculate vehicle speed from throw distance is the empirical method, which is essentially data derived from experiments. The thing is, no matter which way we go about it, we kind of end up in the same sort of speed range. And I'll show you what I mean. Don't worry, we're not going to do any maths this time. This is a website that automatically calculates, without us doing any math whatsoever, the speed from pedestrian throw. If we use the distance of 5 feet that we calculated in the previous video using a different formula, you see we come up with around 5 miles per hour. Now, if we plug in the EMT distance of around 10 feet, now we're getting up to around 9 miles per hour. If we type in Trooper Dunning-Kruger's 34 feet, we end up with 21 miles per hour. The only way we're getting close to 24 miles per hour is 40 feet or more. But let's say it's just a little bit more complex than the formula we did in the last couple of videos, yet we're still coming up with a similar value. That is, when the pedestrian is thrown 5 feet, the vehicle speed is around 5 miles per hour. The same caveats apply as the last two videos. These are only estimations and they are based on centre mass impact. Now, let's have a look at what empirical data tells us. The caveat here is that this data that I got my hands on is from 2016, so more accurate data would have been collected since 2016. If we look at Trooper Dunning-Kruger's throw distance of 30 metres, which is the last value on the right, it tells us for an adult that will be around 22 metres per second, which is about 50 mile an hour. If we come back down this other end to the left and put in the EMT's estimation of 7 to 8 feet, which was 3 metres, then this chart says 6 metres per second, which is about 13 miles per hour. Perhaps it's because we're using old data here that it's so far different to our formulas, or perhaps the Appel's empirical data just isn't as reliable as the formulas. Either way, the only way we're getting even close to Trooper Dunning-Kruger's figures is by using the simplest form of momentum covered in the first video of this series. I mean, there could be other ways that you can work backwards to figure out what values he had to jimmy to plug into any formula, 
but given his interrogation by Jackson, I'm not getting the impression he's our binomial theorems type of guy. There's also the possibility that Massachusetts State Police have got their own special chart that the rest of the country is envious of. But yeah, <laughs> I don't get the impression that anyone's smart enough to be making their own charts over there. But what do I know? I'm just a computer geek. Although, it has crossed my mind to maybe make an app that people can use to calculate these things roughly. You know, just so you can make sure that you're not getting overcharged for having a car accident, for example. Anyway, I'm done with this subject now. No more maths, I promise. Bye.